Camelot the Build. So Arthur, King of the Britons, has reunified the country, Britain, with a sword of power and built Camelot the Castle. And that's about as far as he's got. Because kings don't do tapestries. So although he's laid out a wonderful curtain wall, four round towers, the main hall, the grand hall, four small halls and the gatehouse, he doesn't really know where the butcher and the baker goes. Because kings don't do tapestries. So he sends Gawain, one of the knights of the round table, down to Camelot Town, where you are, with some of your artistic friends having a light knee top, and persuade you, at sword point, that it really would be a good idea to come and help fill out the interior of Camelot the Castle. Or else. Or else being the name of his sword. So Camelot the Build is about filling out the interior of Camelot Castle, and you do this by laying down tiles. It's an example of the tiles. But where can you lay them is determined by the wall, or lack of it, that exists on the piece. So, for example, this tile has curtain wall in it, so you can lay in any one of the locations that has curtain wall. This is a small hall tile, as this is shown on the piece, and that can go in any one of eight locations inside the small halls. This is the dragon banner and is in part of the great hall, and so can go in any one of these six locations laid out on the great hall. This is the grand fireplace and can go one of two locations inside the great hall. And this is a blank tile and can go anywhere there isn't wall that is outside of the great hall or any of the other halls. So each turn you lay down one to three tiles and you score according to what the tiles have on themselves as a score and what you lay next to. So let's play our hand or three. So I'm going to lay the carpenter, he scores a point, the grain store, that's a point, and this storeroom, that's a point. But because I laid my three tiles orthogonally end to end, they double. So instead of getting three points, I get six. Now, you score, as I said, point for what you lay and what you lay next to. So if I lay this blank tile here, it scores a point off the carpenter tile. If I lay this blank tile here, that scores a point off the granary tile. If I lay, lay down the dead body of Uther Pendragon, that's actually worth three. So three plus two is five, but because I've laid them down in a orthogonal ed touching end-to-end -end pattern of the three, I double my score to 10. Hurrah. Now, so far, all the tiles have just scored orthogonally. In Camelot the Build, there is one tile, the Garden Tile, which scores not only orthogonally, but also diagonally. So if I lay down this tile, it's worth a point in itself, plus one for the grain, one for the storeroom, three for the dead body of Uther Pendragon. So that's six. I lay down a blank tile to connect me to the Scriptorium, which is in a small hall, that's worth three, that gives me a score of nine. But because I've laid them down in a pattern, all touching, I get to double the score to 18, plus six equals 24. And you continue going round, taking turns, laying out one to three tiles, replenishing your hand from the store, until you've filled in the whole of Camelot Castle. Now, the one thing to remember is the very last tile you play scores double against you, so bear that in mind. And that's just an indication. Now, as you can probably see, as you go through the game, there's all sorts of possibilities for doubling your score, for blocking people from good scores, for setting up your own score, you know, from one turn to the next. And that's just the start of it. And that's before you even consider the use of the garden tile. So there you are. Simple, a three-rule system that gives an almost infinite variety of highly strategic player interactive gameplay. Enjoy.